You <laughs> say that, but you got a rookie in a fight. No. I, yes, I'll clarify, you did. I'll clarify this. Unclass the front, just drop the whole pants. You'd be surprised how comfortable yeah. a patrol car can get. There's an extra spicy body that needs uh, securing, and it's in the middle of the summer, and it's sat there for three weeks. Not even just a rookie. If you're the, low, the low man. man. Hey, what's going on? It's Josh and Bill again from Only Cops. We are here back again with another Officer's React. Today, we are looking at team tests from Chen Ford and the Rookie. So this is going to be a compilation of different tests he gave to his Rookie, or Boot, as they called him. Ugh, hate that. Um, but uh, this is going to be completely uncontextualized. If you'd like to give us context, go ahead and put it in the comments below or give better, better suggestions. <laughs> we'll keep going. So why do you want to be a cop? Is this a trick question? You should be able to answer. You want me to train you? I need to know why you're in this car. <sighs> Bit okay. aggressive. Um, my parents are both therapists, so I spent my childhood talking about my feelings. I've been shot! What? Where are you, Boot? What? I'm bleeding to death. You have to call for help. Where are you? Uh, Where are you? Um, I've done this. Uh, now I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> it's your fault. It's pretty good. Get out. What? Yeah. Get out and walk. You can get back in when you know where you are. Accurate. I take I, that. I stopped a trailer. It was a truck and a trailer. Good stop. I, my PTO is very proud of me for the stop. But I wasn't paying attention to where I was at. And it was like a main bros comments. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so like that's fair. She goes, you call it? Where are you at? And I was like, because you got to call the stop, right? And I so know. I called out the plate. I called out my stop, and I was like, she's like, where are you at? And this is a big road. I get it if it was like a side street or something like that. She'd have given me a little. This is a main seat. road. This was like like a like was it six way six, six lane. lane? It's a big main. Road. And for some odd reason, runs north and south it, right through the city. Completely didn't know. She, in the middle of a traffic stop, made me walk. She's like, I'll stand by the car. You got this. Made me walk all the way over to the intersection. Oh. We were just south of Division. <laughs> and oh, so I had to walk gosh. all the way to it. I read it, called it out on the radio, and I walked back. And she looked at me like, we're going to talk about this later. <laughs> this is going in your So I had orientation is probably the biggest barrier to most rookies. A, you haven't been working on the street your whole life or like for years like these guys have so you're not going to be as familiar and as you build up ptsd from working a bunch of calls it's really easy to remember where you're at in a city especially when you spend years or hours or months or whatever uh staying there um my solution literally that drove my pto nuts is every single time i hit an intersection i would call out both which direction and which street i was on so under my breath i'd sit there and i'd be like i'm going left on davis street I mean, south on Davis Street. Okay, south on Davis Street. Okay, I'm going right on Dow Rock Street. Okay, right on Dow. No, no, no. East on Dow Rock. And it he, took me forever. He used to do this when we rode two, man. I did it constantly. And eventually, like, drove over. They had those, like, evaluation sheets oh, yeah, that they yeah. did fill out. If but I had she, one of those for being your partner that day, I would have written it down. <laughs> she, she put in my thing later, he's like, uh, Officer Josh did not know where he was during a traffic stop. He amended this by spending, and she wrote it like real sassy too, Exorbitant. spending 10 straight hours yeah. naming every single, and eventually she's like, if you say it one more time, I'm going to make you fucking I could walk. see her. <laughs> she was so annoyed. I could literally see her face <laughs> while she's angrily writing. Are you ready? You ready? You ready? Yeah. Pushing her little, her yep. little bag. Anyways, yep. I had a really good PTO. For yep. a shout out to you. She knows who she is. She's really good. But uh, I learned a lot. And you know what? I didn't have trouble with orientation after that. <laughs> I know we're north, south, east, and west, and well, it depends. It depends. I definitely, uh, and dyslexia doesn't help, but. He knew his side of town. I did. Bro, if I left my side of town. I know. I was lost for forever. I knew a little more of our yeah. city than he did. Yeah. You, you worked on north side of town. I, I did. only worked on north side. I Never trained did I work on, a sing yeah. Trained on two, worked on two. Yeah. Anyways, it matters. Orientation matters, and that totally will happen to you. And it's important, because literally that situation could play itself out. There's an auto fail for parking in front of the car. I have an honest question for you. Shout out to Axon. Are you a petri dish of stupid? No, don't pull that crap with me. Licencia y registro, por favor. Aren't you fancy? Tell him that it's immigrants like them that make Americans like you look bad. Yikes. Me, we send them all back by catapult. Dijo que debes evitar tocar la bocina a un policía cuando tu camioneta 
está en violación de la mayoría de los códigos de vehículos del Estado. Officer Chen, a word? That's a write-up. What about yours? I strike you as a man who means what he says. Yes, sir. Do I seem laid back to you? Wishy-washy in any way? No, sir. Entonces, ¿por qué cambiarías las palabras que salen de mi boca? Everything is a test, Officer Chen. Hmm. You just got to know. That. No. <laughs> Not a great test. No. There's no, a, we're gonna get there's a different way to no. test that. Also, one that's not like super dangerous. Super racist? Yeah, that's not. No. Also, turning off a body. Also, like having this discussion in the middle of a traffic stop. Yeah. That would happen. Also, like, what if they spoke English, asshole? Like, <laughs> like you don't know. It, I, it happened all the time. All the time. Or people would play that they didn't understand what you were saying or whatever. Like, that's, no. Until you said uh, arrest or jail, then yeah. suddenly they knew you how to speak you English. magically feel, oh, I know, it's, I know what that means. So, <laughs> Tim, that's an F on that one. I give you an A plus in the first test. Ghost head. No, no, hold up a minute. Yo, this is harassment. What? No, it's just good customer service. Kind of like a frequent flyer program for dirtbag drug dealers. Search them, boot. Uh, turn around, Did grab he consent? the wall. Do you have PC? Me. Boot. Keep your hands up, Chin. Also Don't let him get on top of you. You, pretty no. bad there. you say that, but you got a rookie in a fight. No, I, I'll you did. I'll clarify. Uh, that was not my that punishment. kind of fight. <laughs> yeah. And you helped. Yeah. It's really a twofer. I had a very specific call. I was not their PTO. They got a very abbreviated. This is during 2020, so everyone's rookie phase for that. We so. might as well have been PTOs. So There's seven rookies on. But I shift. had a younger female officer, pretty small female officer, and uh, they didn't get a lot of traffic stops. They didn't get to work a lot of calls because it was 2020. I mean, it was that too much. Outside of the nonsense that was going on, they didn't actually get to do police work. Yeah. And we had a call where this female was harassing a male. There was no offense to it, but she was being very. Um, privileged in the way that she was approaching not just us but our male victim in this instance and so uh i told the guy that we ended up driving down the street hey go ahead and get in the car and this female decided that she was not going to listen to us when we said back up and instead of stepping in well, my knee-jerk reaction was about to shove this lady and be like if you step next to my car one more time you're about to go to jail uh i let the rookie figure it out <laughs> and i kind of sat back and i was right next to her but I was like, I, how long is she going to let this chick violate a safety thing and also not listen? And gave her the threat, and the chick backed off, and we had to sort it out from there. And uh, we get done with the call, and she was pretty sharp. She's like, hey, what the fuck? Why didn't you help me? <laughs> After the fact. And I explained to her, I was like, hey, like, y'all haven't learned. Like, it was already unsafe. And right before I checked her, I wanted to see what your metric was for like how safe you felt with someone being that close to you that was clearly like irrational. And this chick was very much bigger than her. And I was like, was I feel a... like I can take this female in a fight. So if I have to step in, I have to step in. But I allowed it to play itself out under a much safer set of circumstances than this. It wasn't a drug dealer. It was not it was a, a drug dealer. We'll call it a yeah. Silva study. Yeah, we'll call it that. But uh, the, the kid did great. And uh, they think she's still on the street now. I'm proud of her. She was a good cop. We'll give us a C minus. I yeah. don't think that I let him punch her and reach for her gun and all. That's incredibly unsafe. Let's say he won the fight. What's he gonna do then? Also, <laughs> also, where was the PC for the search? That was my biggest thing. Was like, mm, did you articulate it? Now, if he would have asked, do you have PC for this search? And she had to articulate it or didn't articulate it. That's a good test. Yeah. Not, I'm gonna tell you to search her without articulating it at all. Yeah. <laughs> and like, Adam, that was. Also, the way that he went about doing it is pretty unprofessional. And then all of this is on body cam. And later on in this, because I have seen enough of these clips, there is an officer that allows another officer to get in a fight and really get his ass beat. That officer gets fired and charged because he basically <laughs> let him get in a fight and failed to act. And failure to act is a punishable thing mm -hmm. as a police officer. You're not allowed to watch another cop get in a fight just standing there like an asshole. Normally... They're pretty big ass chewing. If not, a ruining thing for you. I don't care if it's a rookie or not. You don't let officers get in fights by themselves. Well, you stand there. 
yeah. Vivaldi style witnessing it as opposed to doing anything. We'll keep going. Yeah. It's good lesson. Get it in time. Great working with you, Officer Chen. Yeah. You too, sir. I'm clear for duty. Turned in my paperwork. Oh. You had me assigned to him, didn't you? Everything is a test, Officer Chen. Lucky for you, you passed this one. Now, if you'd have been cool half assing it with Wrigley, then I know you weren't serious about becoming a good cop. With all due respect, sir, you're a pain in my ass. That's my job. 100%. I'd get some rest. See you tomorrow. Through through the rookie phase of your career, that I had a PTO 100%. put me with another PTO to see how I would do. Yeah, but also on top of that, like it is a stress test because you do have a safety blanket. Well, we worked we worked two man units nine times out of ten. You were not in a two man unit, so most of these decisions you are having to make on your own with no safety blanket. Most traffic stops you're making completely by yourself. You know, a lot of these the situations, you're investigating domestic and you guys have to split up or it's a building search and you have to split up. You're making a lot of split second decisions that are completely incumbent, both legally, tactically and morally on you. Their job is to evaluate you in those. They on purpose will make you take calls like DWIs, domestics, emergency responses, you know, active shooters, crazy stuff like that. They make you take those calls. They want to, that's the safest environment you can get real experience in. So yes, that is their job, is to be a pain in the ass sometimes. And it goes a lot to your reputation as an officer too. Uh, there's a lot of times where you get to go invited to do the cool stuff, like serve warrants and go chase guys, or when there's something crazy happening that, that people will listen to you more because you're the one that goes and gets after it. When you're sitting on your yeah. ass doing nothing or sitting on people report notice. calls, they notice. And it affects your reputation. Does it help you in your career? Probably not. But it does have some effect to you on your reputation as an officer. Hey, I'm just going to hit the restroom. Make it fast, boot. Her name is Officer Chip. She gets an A-plus for checking these. Yep. I judge anyone that just blindly goes into a public bathroom. <laughs> Big yikes. Hey, did anyone run out here? What? Someone took my belt and gun. I hung it on the hook and I secured the bathroom beforehand. There was no one else in there. Did the walls of the stall reach top to bottom? No, sir. And it wasn't secure, was it, Boot? Now, your weapon is on the street because you couldn't hold your water. What's a dumb test? Yes. Bradford. When? I'll be right there. Get in. What about my belt? Get in. It's got keepers on it. Free advice. Possibly. You heard of the deer method? If you get keepers and you have an inner and an outer belt, unclasp the front, just drop the whole pants, and you pull it all the way back up, and you put it back on. And at the very least, it stays around your ankles. Take yeah. your radio mic off, though. Radio, yeah. Well, they don't have radio mics because they're dumb and they use <laughs> they can pull it off their belt. But I'm hoping anyone watching this yeah. isn't dumb enough to yeah, walk to around with a radio in their hand. Yeah. But but uh, that, that being be said, uh, you got keepers. You literally because there's like an inner like elastic belt, and then there's the outer clasp, which you yeah. typically have like a buckle. Just leave it on your belt. At least it's around your waist. Worst case scenario. You're not dealing with that bullshit because it can happen. It's a dumb test, but I get it. But let your, let your rookie pee, dude. You ever heard of the DEAR method, D-E-A-R? No. There are four principles of concealment. First is deception, D. Deception shows you one thing, but it's really something else. He gets a fail for no gloves. No kidding. It's for elusive. It appears to be nothing, it's actually something. A for access, things hard to get to. High places, low places. Which brings us to R. R is for repulsive. Toilets, garbage, porn collection, anything that makes you want to puke makes a crook want to hide things there. You've got to be kidding me. Might want to glove up. Saw a box of sex toys in the master bedroom. Ugh. And don't forget the toilet. Search before you flush. Wait, uh, why do I have to be R? 
I don't I don't want to be R. I could be elusive or deceptive or something. Yeah, I'm team Tim on this. At least he said glove up. That was very polite. Yeah. What the hell? What? I've been back there for 20 minutes digging through Caligula's toy chest. And you've had this the whole time? Well, mm. not the whole time. It took me three or four minutes. Mm. You find anything? Uh, yeah. Horrid, filthy things. <laughs> yeah, he probably sticks them in his eye hole. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. Great test. If some crackheads... Sex toys gross you out that bad? I'll be the job for you. I just be great test. A I, plus on that I, one. That's S tier. Yeah, that is S tier. That's pretty. Yeah. He gave a lot of education points there. He was actually teaching. He was. Yeah. Right. Gave her a cute little acronym for it, and let her know that as long as you're a rookie, there's an extra spicy body that needs uh, securing, and it's in the middle of the summer, and it's sat there for three weeks. Not even just a rookie. If you're the low, low man, man. This, guess this is what, what happens. This is what, so, so you get a call, welfare check, right? I'm like, hey, there's an old guy that lives down the street from me. Yikes. He, he hasn't had electricity in a few weeks, and there's, we certainly got a funky smell in there. Yikes. This is exactly what happens. Everybody gets dispatched to it that's going to get dispatched to right? two or three officers, right? Yeah, probably two. Maybe yeah, they three. go like this. They start looking at your chest, and they're looking for badge numbers, yep. right? And the higher your badge number is, the less senior you are, because <laughs> the newer you are to the streets. Guess who goes into that? <laughs> the person with the highest badge number. <laughs> They're gonna be the ones that go. Have fun. And uh, I don't. You just suck it up, Buttercup. <laughs> you know, you know if you a if you really want to know what you're walking into, you go around the house and you look at the windows. Yeah. If there's flies in the windows, be ready. You're in for some fun. Yep. Some legitimate fun. Yep. Wrestling around with a crackhead that hasn't showered in two months. Got fall. I was thinking a dead body. That too. No, but that too. I'm just saying, in general, there's a lot of other things you're going to get poop thrown at you. Bad yeah. day gets spit on. Bad mm. day. The yeah. DWIs that decide to pee all over themselves. Mm. Yeah, or just whip That's it out not, while in handcuffs. Be really, that, maybe this is not the job for you. A guy that gets gumbied through a front windshield? Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Maybe it's not the job for you. Anyways, we'll keep going. You didn't nap, did you? I didn't have time. I gotta find a new place to live. No excuse, Boot. Napping is the key to midnight shift. 100%. No shorter than 20 minutes, no longer than 40. But hey, if you're comfortable ignoring my institutional wisdom. I'm getting evicted. Yeah, whose fault is that? Not mine. I'm turning my building into condos. That's what happens when you gentrify a working class neighborhood. Mm. What the hell is that? That's what we call what? a clue. Mm -hmm. That. There was a guy standing there with a mask on. He was like seven feet tall. <laughs> Peel the mask off slowly. Slowly. Where's the contact? Big yikes. No. No. So mm. Tell me. It happened. Mm -hmm. That's probably the nicest thing that'll happen. Yeah. You might get somebody that sees if they can get like <laughs> you taser out of your belt or something like that. Or take your gun. <laughs> Some of your shit. Take your gun or whatever. Yeah. Don't do that. I don't advise that. But dumber stuff has happened to people. Um, naps are important. For those of us that have experienced uh, sleep deprivation for long periods of time, so you will hallucinate. <laughs> you will or have, dream. Yeah, or if dream. you fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. Um, You'd be surprised how comfortable yeah. a patrol car can get. Dude, it's taking naps is a good idea. Abusing caffeine, I can also highly recommend. Super um, good idea. Yeah, I just 
So shorten your life, but you live a little longer on the street. So does the sleep deprivation. So it's a lose lose. So, anyways, uh, that's that's the reality of a lot of police work. Even if you're not on night shift, uh, getting stuck on overtime, getting stuck on a call, yeah. morale getting crushed because your administrator sucks, so your manpower goes down, and now you have to work mandatory overtime. They're going for extra shifts. It happens. Or if you do like a shift bid for a certain shift that doesn't work all night, yeah. and then your administration sucks, mm -hmm. and they put you on a shift with seven rookies. On midnights instead yep. of the one that you're supposed to work. Yep. So. Lose your days off. Yeah, yeah, lose your days off too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, not specific at all. We'll keep going. We might need to pause for <laughs> Josh to cry a little. <laughs> Unclench my fist. <laughs> Ooh. How did Peeping Todd get to where you arrested him? He drove. Like I said, I have his car keys. But not his car. Look, most child sex offenders have a network with other offenders. They share videos of their sick desires, which leads to other victims, other suspects. What do you think they keep this cornucopia of evidence? In their cars. That's right. In case parole officers search their houses. His car is a treasure trove of evidence. Other crimes, more victims, DNA, evidence we may never have obtained otherwise. And you just left it in the street. <laughs> Reverse directory on a vehicle registered to Todd directory. Collins. 7 out of 19, subject owns a blue 9080 tunnel line E350 van with California plate 6 Paul Charlie Ida 0903. It shows the vehicle was impounded from your location an hour ago. Truck. You had the van impounded? Once it was clear, you overlooked that detail. But then why did we race over here? So you could discover your own mistake. That's what today is all about, Boot. Well, and it's just a bonus that you get to humiliate me? Don't blame me for the fact that you let yourself get rattled by one dubious look. Now, you make it out here, find yourself riding solo. These streets will test you in ways you didn't think possible. The only way to survive is to control your environment at all times. Good advice. That was actually a good test. That was a very good test. It's safe. There was no danger. You just got to discover it on your own. Self-discovery is the best kind you can have. And truly, you're being tested by somebody that's not, hopefully, out to get you. Like, to hurt you, yeah. basically. Because out there in the real world, Google officer getting shot on a traffic stop. Google all of that stuff. There are plenty of examples of people that don't have your best interest in mind and see how those things end up. It's the safest time to learn. What's the least safe? The safest time to learn is the academy, but... That's or true. watching only cops. Ah. But, uh, <laughs> but ultimately, like th this is that's the job of a PTO or an FTO. Like their job as a field training officer is is to help you through that transition of being some kid that's certified to be a police officer and actually becoming one. And it, and even when you're done with that, you're not done with that journey because then you got to relearn all of that stuff now without the safety blanket. Yeah. And then, like, you're going to have to re-enter uh, that world where you're dealing with experienced officers or just officers that are more senior than you that are watching you learn and progress through that stuff. You work your own calls that are big, and that's just the way it goes. I really like that one. It was a good one. It was that a really was good a one. a good one. Did you study explosive devices in the academy? What? Yeah, I mean, a little. Good. What? Well, you paid attention because I had a buddy from the bomb squad mock up an IED and hide it somewhere here in this part. What? You got 10 minutes to find it, or I'm adding the duty hat to your standard uniform. Go. Wow. I guess LAPD's a little yeah. wild. It's 10 seconds. I like how she left her body cam on for this. They'd be like, you were unencumbered and you were doing this bullshit? Maybe in They're not training, bro. Yeah, maybe in remediation. This is actually exactly how this goes down. Scenario-based training. Some of the best you can get. I found it. Keep in that hot. Oh. And you're dead. Because radio frequency energy can trigger a bomb. Yep. You gonna forget that lesson, Boot? No. Good. Go get cleaned up. A little extreme, but I like it. 
Man, the second she reached for her belt, I was like, no! What are you doing? You might as well kick the thing. Golly! <laughs> <laughs> that was a good test, but that's yeah. way too... They, I, they Hollywooded it up a little bit, but... Uh, I mean, if you have this much time on patrol, yeah. oof, good and, for you. And that's kind of why I said th this would actually make a lot more sense in what they call remediation. And so they might take you back to the academy or back to a training environment where they're trying to walk you through some principles and some stuff yeah. that they think that you're struggling with. Um, it, or it, if you really suck, they make you go through field training again, yeah. completely after remediation, yep. and you're still a cop. Yep. So You don't get to know, kind of like you don't know if your doctor got C's or A's. <laughs> you don't know how many times you can the officer tell. you got. Yeah. You can kind of tell. <laughs> I mean, you're probably right. Yeah. In some instances, you can tell. Uh, but I will say this. They, they do go, and even in in-service, like I was really lucky enough, the last in-service I went to, they did a really good job with creating search tactic scenarios and stuff like that. They threw a lot of curveballs at us. The, the training scenarios like this are incredibly valuable in helping an officer kind of figure it out. Or as new threats emerge, you got to imagine like IEDs. Mm -hmm. I dealt with unattended bags, but we never had a confirmed bomb yeah, around where never. I was at. I, mean, so I, I never had that call. But at, if that threat were to emerge, this type of training is incredibly valuable to officers. And they do let it be super zany. Look at this. Chenford being a married couple for 11 minutes straight. Whoa. Whoa. So it does escalate. Anyways, also, we, now I get the Chenford. Reference. If you guys like uh, Chenford episodes and things like that and like stuff like The Rookie, go ahead and put it in the comment section below for suggestions that you'd like us to watch. Uh, if you guys uh, are interested in this type of content, go ahead and subscribe. We have a bunch of these that we have produced and we continue to produce more all the time. Uh, we also go live twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7.30 Central Standard Time, uh, where we do left plays, we do uh, body cam breakdowns of real police officers doing real yes. things. Uh, so if you guys are interested in that, come check it out. And if you're really interested and want to contribute more directly to the type of videos that we react to or the content that we cover, you can join our Patreon group. It was as little as one dollar a month and that gives you access to our discord and our discord is a direct link to everybody here producer juan bill and myself and uh all of our patreon subs so uh if you guys are interested in that go sign up and until next time thank you for riding two men with us peace chenford i get it now I was like, yeah. Chenford, that doesn't make sense. But. I believe they're still not together. I think they're now together in season five, finally, but it's been mm. like a whole, will they, will they? It's thing. been a whole thing? It's the entirety of the subreddit for the thing, because I went in there looking for like, possible good episodes to watch, and the entirety of it is like, Chenford, when are they getting together? They're totally blah, blah, blah. That's because I guess the actors have chemistry and they're kind of